Ta gli an yevri scalta fuor, ur cimpel andromor, ac in sanala ta shiachan, a fashte vjog a stor. Ta gakshan de lo dolon chri, ac de sog an ban glano, shine amidj lo in lo, o lo lo lan, lo hin slo la lo. In late 1877, Piggott and Co. of Dublin published Ancient Music of Ireland, a compendium of notated melodies collected by the late George Petrie and edited by Francis Hoffman. Page 18 of the publication included the score of a mournful air called My Wife is Sick, which soon caught the attention of the English baronet and lyricist, Sir Harold Bolton. Keeping the melody intact, Bolton added words to the tune and transformed it into that haunting lullaby or ballad we know today as the Castle of Dromore. Published in 1893 by Kramer & Co. of London, the ballad was included on page 216 of Bolton's Songs of the Four Nations, a collection of English-language songs set to traditional airs, each arranged by the musician Arthur Somerville. Interestingly, the book also featured translations of the songs into Irish, Scots Gaelic, Cornish and Welsh. The Castle of Dromore was rendered to Irish by Douglas Hyde as Cashlin and Droma War. Long before the release of Songs of the Four Nations, Bolton had already established himself as a songwriter of merit, as evidenced by the publication back in 1884 of Songs of the North. His collection of Scottish theme songs, which included the Sky Boat Song, a memorable ballad by Bolton set to an old Highland air. As for The Castle of Dromore, it seems that the first recorded public performance of the ballad in Ireland was on Christmas Eve, 1894, at the Assembly Rooms in Abbey Leash, County Leash, the Leinster leader reporting that it was sung by the Honourable Miss Victoria Grosvenor at a concert held under the patronage and presence of of Viscount and Viscountess de Vesey. In March of the following year, Miss Kathleen Milligan sang the Irish Hyde version at a concert held at the Belfast headquarters of the Young Men's Christian Association. It's easy to see why people came to love the ballad. List with tenderness, atmosphere and spirituality. The words speak of a mother lulling her baby to sleep, while outside the decay of stormy autumn turns into the icy stillness of winter. She asks Our Lady to protect her wee treasured child, her Vashtav Yoga store, and to keep all malevolent spirits and banshees away from this helpless little bud of spring. Dublin born writer. Catherine Tynan, was so smitten by the lyric, it inspired her to write a short story which was set in the depths of an Irish winter. The Castle of Dromore was included in Tynan's 1902 collection, The Handsome Quaker. It was a bright Christmas weather, 
frosty with icicles on every bough. The mummers who run through their strange medley of Christian and pagan story night after night at the castle of Dermore had played their Old Testament mystery play at the Thulsal. As the ballad became popular, people in counties Down, Limerick and Kerry were claiming it as their own, linking the castle to a specific location in their respective counties. Since the second verse referenced the Black Water and Clan Owen, some argued strongly that the castle was in fact in County Tyrone, the home territory of Gaelic warrior Owen O'Neill. But Tyrone is not the only county to have a river Blackwater, or indeed a Dromore. So this is mere speculation. Irish emigrants brought the ballad to Australia and to America, and on the 23rd of April 1905 it was sung by over 100 choristers at Carnegie Hall, New York, at the annual concert organised by the city's Gaelic Society. The choir's choice of singing The Castle of Dermore was a selection of special interest, said the New York Press this lullaby of strange and peculiar sweetness. Back in Ireland, it was frequently sung at Gaelic League concerts in Belfast, Dublin and Derry by the tenor Cahill O'Byrne, a close friend of Roger Casement. And when visiting Belfast, it was not unusual for Casement to request the song from O'Byrne. The earliest known commercial audio version of the ballad was released in late 1931, the recording made for the Decca label by actor and singer Richard Hayward. Singer and harpist Mary O'Hara included the ballad on her 1957 album Songs of Aaron, which may well have inspired advertising executives attached to the independent newspaper group in Dublin to hatch a most unusual Christmas marketing idea. The group hired Belgian-born musician Dr. Staff Gebrewers to play a musical instrument called a carolin and to play it on the roof of their headquarters at Independent House, Abbey Street at 3pm on the 6th of December 1959. Shoppers and workers looked up in amazement as Gebrewers played a series of melodies, one of which was The Castle of Dromore. Nineteen sixty saw the release of An Evening with Paul Robeson, a collection of twelve songs sung by the man who gave the world Old Man River back in 1936. Not only did the album include The Castle of Dremore, but it also featured another Bolton classic, the Sky Boat Song. Collected by George Petrie, lyricised by Harold Bolton, and sung by amateur and professional singers throughout the world. Such is the story of the Castle of Dromore. October winds lament around the castle of Dromore But peace is in her lofty halls, my first of yuck, a store. Though autumn leaves may droop and die, a bud of spring are you? Sing her 
Deutsche Bailu, la lu lo lang, sing ha she bailu, la lu. Bring no will will to hinder us, my helpless babe and me. Dread spirit of the black water, clan Owen's wild banshee. For holy Mary pitying us in heaven for grace doth sue. Sing hush a bailu, la lu lo lang, sing hush a bailu, la lu. Take time to thrive, my ray of hope, in the garden of Dromore. Take heed, young eaglet, till your wings have feathers fit to soar. A little rest. And then our world is full of work to do. Sing hush a bailu, la lu lo lang. Sing hush a bailu, la lu. Sing in hush a bailu, la lu lo lang. Sing hush a bailu.